My name is Leo Connors, and welcome to The Ring and All Other Sports. Tonight, I got a very special guest. I haven't seen him in a long time. Jeremy Carter, also known as the outpatient, also known as Jay Cobain. Yes, sir. Nice to see you, sir. Nice to see you, too, my friend. Time, you know? Yes, it has been. Let's get right into it. Where'd you, you grow up? I grew up in a small mill town, uh, Maynard, Massachusetts, and I pretty much lived in, Main in you know, Massachusetts my whole life. And okay. I live in Marlboro now, so it's cool. You know? Excellent. When did you first see pro wrestling? When I first saw pro wrestling, yeah. my dad took me to the Acton Boxborough High School back in like 1981, back when like Sergeant Slaughter fought like Chief J Strongbow wow. and the wow, Seek of the Wild Samoa, and he like spit on the crowd. It was amazing because I mean, I was so small, right. I was like nine years old, eight years old, but it, was, it caught my attention right away. You know, and my fandom really kicked in around like 1984. So it was nice. So the Hogan era, right? Pretty much oh, when yeah. you really dove in. Yeah, huh? I was a fan of Hogan for about five minutes. Yeah, and, yeah. But yeah. well, you said Cheap J. I was a fan of Cheap J. He was the very first wrestler I saw. And he wrestled uh, the Continental Nobleman, Joe Turco. Oh, geez. that's up. But I, I like to say, I see him coming down the aisle. You know, with the headdress on. Oh, yeah. If I didn't see that, I don't know if I would have kept changing the channels. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's true. It's very true. It's, you know, especially with the WWF back in like 1984. Yeah. And you, you get to see like Hulk Hogan pin the Iron Sheik and doing all the red, white, and blue, and it was cool for a minute. Yeah. And then. I saw Dr. D. David Schultz, and then oh. I saw Big John Studd, yeah. and then I saw like Bob Orton and Paul Orndorff and then Roddy Piper, yeah. and I became an instant heel fan, and I, I, I forgot about Hogan. I, I think I started like booing Hogan. I, right. I wanted to see the bad guys beat him. I, mean, I still have my favorite guys like the JYD and Tito Santana. Right. Superfly Jimmy Snooker was, was an amazing performer, too. Yeah, absolutely. I'm surprised you didn't say one of your old opponents, King Kong Bundy. Oh, I figured we were going to get to We <laughs> so will. Point. We will. He was, he, was, you know, he was awesome. Everybody says he's like was the nicest guy in the locker room. He didn't big league anybody. He had, you know? Oh, no. He said, you know, he, he was really, really cool, you know? And it was funny. I told him a story. I'll share, I'll share this really quick yeah. before we go further. When I was 10, my mother actually made a King Kong Bundy birthday cake for me. It was like in the shape of Bundy. She, she did the whole the thing for me for my birthday. And then like years and years later, uh, for Jay Gillette and Quinn Sigmund College out in Worcester, I ended up fighting King Kong Bundy in the main event. And I wow. told him all about it. It was just funny. You know, yeah, yeah. Just, you never know what kind of guy he's going to be, but he was so cool about everything. He was really, really and cool. everybody says that. You brought up Jay Gillette. Just reminds me, I got to hit him up. I hit him up like a year ago, and he <laughs> said, I can't do it now, but hit me up later. He'd be a good guest, too. Oh, he's cool. I've known him since before he even started. You know? Yeah. Good wrestler. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, were your friends and family into it? You said your dad took you. My dad was the only one. My mother couldn't stand yeah, it. My, my grandparents couldn't it, so. stand it. And nobody really cared about it. My dad took me to the shows in the Boston Garden. He took me to the shows at the Worcester Centrum. I got to see Macho Man beat Santana for the championship belt wow. in Boston. You know, I, I, I mean, and it just... It just went from there. Yeah. And then eventually he stopped wanting to go to the shows. Cause, and then, you know, when I got old enough, I started going myself and with right. friends and things like that. But That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so you already said who some of your favorite wrestlers were. You know, Snooker and, uh, and JYD. And, um, Especially my, my, my all-time favorite is Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah. yeah. And Roddy Piper. Right. And Jake the Snake, just for the interviews alone. I mean, oh, yeah. He, he just mesmerized you. And you're like, oh, my God. You know? But, I mean, I appreciate all the talent. Even, right. I mean, I watch today, even in today's current product, I still watch today too, you know, even like this weekend with those, with the, with the double thing. I mean, it was way too long for me to even want to stay focused on it. Right. But I'll tell you, Cody's come a long way too. So yeah. Yeah. And the story is finally finished. Chapter one. Chap well, yeah, chapter <laughs> one. We'll see how it goes, but I thought it was kind of cool. The story's cool. finished, but the book is still open. Right. So, true. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. They haven't gone, they haven't gone anywhere yet with it. Yeah, so we'll that's see a happens. good way to put that. That really you know, is. I mean, they focused on that first story, and then, you know, now he's got to work on everything else. So it's yep. Cool. And, I, I, and I thought, like you said, it was long. WrestleMania was long. You know, two nights. Plus, during the day, they had NXT. I oh, you know. I watched it. I appreciate watching their developmental Me too. talents, you know. That's the one show that I don't read. I watch everything else. I, you know, and I DVR it. And right. I read the results and I watch what I want. But NXT, I watch. I don't read. I, I watched NXT in the afternoon. And then day one of WrestleMania, my wife had gone out with her friends to go do something. And I was home by myself. So me and the cat just sat and watched WrestleMania nice. day one. Which was really good. They had some really good stuff on that night. Yeah. 
You know, yeah, they did. That even, for a six pack ladder match, it was kind of a disaster. They actually did a good job telling yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the, uh, what, 12 people in the match, right? Yeah, That's yeah. insane. It, it was insane, but it, it made sense. Yeah. The, the, at least the ending made sense. Right. So that right. Was, that, that's the most important thing. You know? And I thought it was great that Our Truth got a little, you know what I mean? Because that guy it. is so awesome. Oh, yeah, he deserved it, you know. Uh, yeah. I think Rhea Ripley is the best woman talent in the entire industry period Absolutely. right now. Bar Absolutely. None. Bar none. But yeah. that's just, but that, I'm biased towards it. Just... No, but I, I agree with you 100%. <laughs> and I think, a lo- I think a lot of people would agree with that. I mean, there's a lot of greats, too. I mean, you get yeah. your Charlotte Flares and your Bailey's. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not trying to be, I'm not trying to plug WWE's product because obviously they, they do a good enough job doing that on their own. Right. But, you know, it was, it was fun to watch WrestleMania without having to go back and watch it. And, you know, I just. I wasn't sure if we were gonna if it was gonna come up during the conversation today, so I'm like, I better make sure I watch the majority of this crap just in <laughs> right, case. Just in case. Hey, did you see that? Well, not really, but I've been right. seeing snippets on TikTok. Do you know what's crazy is um, you know, Mo- Mercedes by T- Mercedes Monet slash Sasha yeah yeah Sasha Banks. Banks yeah yeah you know signs with them, but their audience has gone down. They were started at like eight hundred thousand. Next you week notice was seven hundred. The more money he spends on talent, the lower the crowd total. Yeah. Get. Adam Copeland didn't even move the needle. No, I'm not sorry. at all. I'm sorry, he didn't. You know, and, and I'm not. I would never talk ill about it. But right. You got to be smart about these things. Okada didn't move a needle. Right. And and they're great. Will Ospreay too, who's well, great. Yeah, he's fantastic. But is he going to translate to an American audience? True. I mean, Very he, true. He's had some great matches, but they're against guys that nobody really cares about watching. Right. And until they can figure that out, yeah. they're never going to be able to compete with, with the big boys. And I think Adam Copeland's starting to look kind of old with all those young guys around. Well, you it know? doesn't help that he's making his hair all look gray, you know? Yeah. Man. Right. But you know what? It's cool. You know, yeah. AEW is a great alternative if you, yep. don't, if you don't care to watch, you know, and, and now that everything has changed and it's under a new regime, I mean, it's kind of funny that it's under a regime of the guy that I shared wrestling school class with back in 1991 and and then you know i mean i was i was in kowalski's school when he had his first match wow um, no kidding in the independence yeah yeah right around the time when i first started with referee rich lannon remember rich (laughs) oh i love rich rich was cool rich is awesome he's like related to me my the mother of my older kids that's her first cousin oh cool yeah rich is a great guy i had him on for two episodes oh he's awesome he was great all right um when did you know wrestling was something that you wanted to do? Honestly, it came out of the blue. Yeah, I was a big fan. You know, we'd have we'd have backyard wrestling. You know, right, backyard right. wrestling all the time. Uh, you know, beating the hell out of each other for no good reason, but to supposedly emulate. Although you weren't really emulating because you couldn't do any of the moves that the guys on TV right, were right. doing. There was no such thing as a backyard. There is nowadays with like wrestling rings. Kids have wrestling rings in their backyards. It's crazy. No, we had like. A, a square marked out on, on the dirt, yeah. and we would just get in there and try to make each other submit, and it was like the most horrific thing possible. Hit know? the imaginary ropes <laughs> with, with a clothesline that could that you could you would you would kill somebody yeah. with because you didn't know that there was a difference between right. stiff and work and, yeah. and everything and all that kind of stuff. So, no, um, one day it was I just got out of high school in in June of ninety one, and my dad comes up and goes, "So you're not going to go to college?" I'm like, "No, I have no interest in going to college." He goes. I got an idea for you. And then he had gotten the number for Kowalski School out of Malden, Massachusetts. Right. And I went down there in the fall of 91, right around the fall of 91, beginning of 92, and went in. He's like, well, let's see what happens. And, right. you know, it was it was scary as hell. Right. And you go in there, and, you know, I love Walter. He was a, a killer, was an amazing teacher. But he would beat the balls off you. Honestly, yeah. pardon my French, but he would definitely he would right. just beat the hell out of you yeah. to see if you'll come back the next day. Exactly. And I remember going home just from taking the bumps from the middle ropes to the floor and getting clubbed across the back by like Perry Saturn oh. and, and, and uh, like I said, uh, Paul was there. Yeah. And uh, Tony Roy was there. Tim, Tim McNini, who would just beat up the guys, but he would, he would help condition you. Right. And I woke, I, I woke up the next day and I had black and blues going from wrist to shoulder on both sides, yeah. R- rope burns, and everything. Yeah. And my dad's like, so what do you think? I go, well, let's take that drive back down to Malden on Thursday because it was I was going four days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, nice. Saturday, Sunday, from Maynard, Massachusetts, all the way out to Malden, yeah. wrestle for like three, two or three hours, and then go back. But it was definitely an experience that, you know, God rest in peace, Walter, but, you know, he's, I appreciate everything that he Gave to me and to right. everybody else that's in the wrestling business. Honestly, he trained honestly. so many great 
great wrestlers. He, 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 you know, he taught you more than you ever realized until you get more seasoned later on and then things start clicking in your head right. that he was trying to explain to you and you're just trying to learn all the moves right away. Right. Because you know, I spent my first few years in, in the career just trying to learn the moves and put them together and I was having great matches with Trey, the smooth operator. We, we used to wrestle you know, 20 minute matches because Walter's matches were minimum 20 minutes. You weren't getting any small matches on these independent right. shows. And, you know, I was huffing and puffing like a, like a bulldog because, I mean, I, I didn't have the kind of conditioning like right, the right. guys did, but, you know, and uh, it was just like, you know, when I was beginning, I was just trying to put moves together. And then, in the, like, after about the fourth year or so, I started trying to figure out the psychology right. in the ring and what my character really wants to portray. Like, how do I work, interact with the crowd and the fans and, and get the reactions that I'm hoping to get? If you can find that one trigger person in the side of the ring, you can get the whole side to erupt. Right. And, and that's, that, was, that, was, that was most important to me. It's like everybody can do the moves. Right. But can you get the people to want to either boo you or cheer you or throw stuff at you or try to take a swing at you? you. Yeah. You know, or whatever, or cheer you. I mean, whatever, right. you, want, whatever you want to do, can you get the reaction? If you just go out there and ignore them, they might clap a couple of times for some moves, but they're not going to give you what, you, what you're not going to give you what you want. They're not going to give the promotion what it wants. Right. It wants interaction. It wants people to want to come back and take their money back out of their pocket and buy a ticket for the next month right. or for the next event. If they got bored because oh, there's a bunch of moves, but who cares? You know, that might be just like exposing a little too much, but I don't care. I'm just I'm just being honest with you. It's just yep. to me. It's all about fans. It's all about the guys and the girls and the, and the women and children who are every 12 inches sitting across the rows, however many are there. It's all about them. And, and it's about their experience. Yep. You're in there to perform and hopefully have a good time doing it, but you're also there to make their time as enjoyable as possible. Right. You know, even when I was a bad guy, that was that was the philosophy that I that I always went by. And it's awesome, like you know, for a character like you, you know, you'd come out and and, and the interactions must have been great. <laughs> I'll share I'll share one that just popped into my mind because it'll be popping as yeah. we go. We were in Revere at the dog track in Revere, and I'll tell you, the one thing I hated about this place was that the locker room was like a half a mile from the ring. They had put it all oh, the way really? down around the corner, and. I it was Revere or it was one one of Wonderland Dark Track, maybe? Yeah, yeah Wonderland. It might be Wonderland. Probably. Okay. So and I remember the locker was so far. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm walking. I'm like, how far is the freaking ring? And you get all the way up there. And I can bust in through the curtain. And I turn and I scare these two girls. And the girl had a big pop popcorn. And the popcorn flew up in the air. And the dad's yelling at me, you ruined my cat's popcorn. And it, was, it was just, it was hysterical. Right. I mean, that was the night that Tony Rumble let me run amok throughout the, the, um, I think it was in Revere, out in the open stadium, and I, like, I was like running through the crowd, and people were just scattering everywhere. Wow, like in Japan and Brody and Hanson. It was so cool, you know. And um, I'm sure that you're gonna be going into different things like that, but you know, I, I working with Tony was a, was an amazing experience too. That guy was awesome. He was right. he was really cool. What a mind for the business! And if he didn't pass away, the landscape of New England wrestling would have been a lot different than and it. And the it was. hardest. Baseball helmet headshot I had ever taken in my entire really? life. Really? I've taken chair shots that, that hurt less than when he would come in and El Cabong us with the freaking helmet across right. the head. You know, but we'll, we, can, we definitely can get it. To <laughs> Tony, Tony was a hell, hell of a guy. Oh, yeah. Um, all right. What was the first, or oh, you already said the first show you went to, was it the garden you said, or Worcester, one or the other? I mean, to, actually, to see as a fan? Yeah. My dad took me to the Acton Boxborough Box High School when I was okay. a little kid. As we started going on a regular basis to the Boston Garden and the Worcester Centrum yep. in the 80s, in like the mid 80s and late 80s, because they were running shows every other month, but it was exciting you right. know, when you're a kid. Yeah. And like the feud between Piper and Hogan, and I don't know if you've ever been in the Boston Garden back oh, in yeah. the day, but Hulk Hogan's fans, they'd be like, 20 of them that would come in dressed like Hulk Hogan yeah. on one side. And then from the other side, you see all the Piper's pit crew come in. With, they were all wearing the kilts and the hot rod shirts. <laughs> and they would literally brawl right. in the crowd while the matches are going That's on. That's nuts. And then and security would try to get in the middle, and they would rip chairs out of the, out of the floor and smash each other with, with the rows of chairs. I, we, one time, my dad got us tickets. We were like eighth row ringside, yeah. young. And I was, it was um, Snooker versus Piper in, in, the, in, the, in the ring. And... All of a sudden, the Hulk Hogan fans and the Piper fans just collided, and they were like in the next section over from us. Chairs went flying by us, wow. and my mother and my little sister were with us too. And my mother's like, "I'm never coming on one of these goddamn things again." <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, she came later on when I actually started getting. She went to a couple. Yeah. You know, and um, 
it, I was appreciative of it when, whenever she wanted to come on. I think she came to maybe three in my entire life, yeah. but it was it was all right. You know? Yeah, she didn't like it though. My mother hated my mother hates oh. wrestling. And I still remember the time that they tried to make my grandmother watch a match. Oh my god, yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, they they because back in the day when I was wrestling, you didn't have YouTube, you didn't have right. t you didn't have social media, you had tape trading. So. Yeah. If you were lucky enough to get a copy of the tape from the promoter, and I, I remember taking a tape of one of Kowalski's shows that uh, Smooth and I did, and I put it in the machine, and my grandma was like, shut it off, I can't watch anymore. I can't stand seeing you getting beat up and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, okay, mom. <laughs> right, that's wild. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, what about your first indie show? <clears throat> my first independent show was in, I think it took me a while, but it was like the mid-93, we, it was a, I think it was Stoughton. I think the, in high school, uh, it was for Kowalski. Yeah, I fought the smooth operator actually, uh, and um, it was it was a it was a. Oh, so the first indie show you even went to, you were on it. Yes. Oh wow! Because I was never really introduced to the indies. Right. When I was younger. Yep. I was introduced to the indies when I started wrestling. Right. So that's when I started going to the indie shows. As, as and it wasn't anything for anything else. It was just that it wasn't really involved in my culture. You know, right, I, right. I was I was I was more, you know, you know, w watching him on TV and, and stuff like that. But when I started wrestling, my first independent show was one that I was on. That's it, wild. Yeah, it was it's it's cool. You know, I but back then, I mean, the indie scene wasn't anywhere near what it was in like ninety two, right. ninety three. Right. I mean, it's huge now. Yeah, it is. It's you, and there's so many companies out there. And you know what's different today, too, is um, how, like, back, probably when you, nobody wanted you to go anywhere else. You know what I mean? Like, I oh, don't know God, how no. killer was, but, like, you know, Jeff Costa, for instance, around yeah. here. You wrestled, I mean, he didn't want you wrestling over here. Oh, no, no, they didn't, they, didn't want, they didn't want any of that kind of stuff at right. all, you know. You and was, now everybody kind of works together, kind of. It's because, you know, nobody has a, nobody can afford contract on guys. Right. You know, the last time that I can remember anything, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Chaotic Wrestling, when, yes. they, when they first Jamie. kicked in, they were offering guys, yep. inde independent mass, you know, New England guys, contracts, right. but, but they, want, they wanted exclusively for Chaotic. Yeah. And, uh, and it caused a lot of heat because some guys were actually champions in other companies, right. and they had to just drop the, just, just walk away and leave the belts hanging yeah. there, and it really made a lot of... A lot of heat for a lot of promotions out there. And there was a lot of heat between Chaotic and the World Wrestling Wrestling Federation of America, Bradley's thing. There was also, there was also some heat from Chaotic and like um, NWA New England and right. stuff like that because, you know, talent was working with both, but then they stopped working with both. Right. And it was... And that one, Jay was running it, right, Jason? I believe so, yes. Yeah. And talent of Tony and, and then right. you know, Jason later on, yeah. All right. Ah, so you already said it, but we'll bring it up. You were trained by the great Killer Kowalski. Oh yes, sir. Oh, um, yes, sir. And and you, who else was in the class? I know you mentioned a few names, but man, I mean, honestly, I mean, it was it wasn't like a class, but you know, guys would would come in and come come and go and stuff like that. Right. But the the guys who were training in the school at the time that I was there, you had guys like like I said, Tim McNeeny, um, the smooth operator was there helping yeah. out on. Uh, Tony Roy, uh, Triple H, obviously, yep. uh, Perry Saturn, Cronus was there. Wow. God rest, rest in peace. Johnny was really cool to me. I've never had any problem with Johnny. Um, at one point, China was in there when she, when she first came yeah. into the business. Uh, Steve King. Um, was Amy. Mike Hollow there, too? Yes, he was. Yeah. Uh, I was getting out. I was, yeah, I was, yeah, I was no, getting I ABC. There, there, was, there, was, there was a lot of really great talent. Uh, right. Freight Train Dan, he, yeah. was, he was there, you know, um, it's hard for me to remember everybody, right? But I mean, they were all, they all had, you know, Kowalski had, had a good group of guys, you know. Yeah, he did. He did. That was that was a, probably one of the better classes back then. Honestly, if you think of, look at all the legends you pretty much named. I mean, it was it was cool, you know. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Um, remember Ron Studd? Yes. Like Ron Studd. Yeah. I remember when John Studd first brought him up to the school, and um, Kowalski was having Smooth and I do the. Um, that Japanese um, arm drag or the uh, the helicopter, we were yep. doing the helicopter gimmick, just to show them how it was done. Right. And of course, I, I was eating the uh, the other end of the helicopter the entire time, which was cool. Right. But I didn't think I was going to be able to handle that bump. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. You know? Being a big guy, there are some bumps you just don't take. You right, know? right. <laughs> You're a pretty big guy yourself, so. And yeah. Ron Studd, he was pretty big. He was, he was a big dude. Yeah, you know? he was. He yeah. was really big. Um, well, why don't you tell us about your first match? <sighs> 
Honestly, it's most of it's a blur at this point because yeah. I don't know. If you, like when you first get in the ring, and you get in there, and you you coming down the ring, and you get the music playing, your, your music playing, and you, you get in the ring. And my my thing, I would, I would go to the corner, I would like, headbutt the buckles. Right. And I had my manager, the court jester, who was a really cool dude, uh, Barry, and and like I would like shoving referees out of the way just just to provide the the, the characters because the outpatient character was crazy. He was out right. of his mind. He was kind of like an escapee from a mental institution. And you like, looked the role. You <laughs> really what, did. And, you know, it was hard because, like, even like the I used to blacken my eyes right. in with that with that baseball black yep. stuff because it wouldn't rub off. It wouldn't right. it wouldn't fall off. It wouldn't look like I was crying mascara. Yeah. If you put that stuff on, it stayed on. Right. And then I had the hair that was all wet, and I used to wear the ripped up street clothes. And and like later on, I, I adopted like um, hospital scrubs later on down the road. Right. Right. But from the beginning, it was like there was like the ripped up street clothes, like the really just crazy deranged. Yeah. Character because that's what I was trying to portray, and I remember getting in the ring, doing a bunch of really cool stuff with him, you know, taking the W, taking the L, and then walking out, and just like, oh my God, is it over? And then sitting in the locker room and changed up, he was like, oh, you did a good job. I'm like, but well, thank you. It, but it was mostly a blur at that point because right. you're so focused on what you're doing that that was like, those are the early stages where I would come out, I would go wild, but then. I stayed wild through the match, but I wasn't interacting with the with the crowd yet because I didn't know. Right. I mean, I was still fairly, you know, new and 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 like just trying to pay attention to. Okay, can I remember the spots? Can I remember the spots? Can I remember the spots? Can I, and right. Just, by the time you're done, it's over, and you're like, oh my god, we just did like 18, 20 minutes, and I don't remember any of it except for the fact that I'm so blown up that I'm not gonna be able to breathe for like two days. But it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> Hopefully that answers your question. But yeah. No, nah, that was a good answer. Um, all right, let's get into the fan questions. Absolutely. Sandra Chase. I, I being Sandra. an old lady, I know Jeremy as a ghost hunting friend. Uh oh. <laughs> Does it help to have the wrestling education to be wary at all times? Oh, you always want to have your head on a swivel. Right. I figured if somebody was going to mention the, the ghost hunting thing, my wife and I are paranormal investigators, cool. ghost hunters and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah I love, I'm very interested in that stuff, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's really an amazing thing. I've developed abilities and stuff like that. I can say that I'm actually a clairvoyant and I can actually wow. communicate with spirits, which I never knew about before. But, it, you know, we've been doing it now. My wife and I have been doing it for about 10 years now. Wow. But as far as it, you know, when you're in wrestling, you got to pay attention to everything going on around you. You're, you're paying attention to people behind you. Yeah. You're paying attention to where your opponent is, yep. the referee, your manager, the guy with the cameras. You got to pay attention to the guy with the cameras. Right. You really want them seeing your ass the whole time you're in the ring? <laughs> no, you, you got to pay attention to everything going on out yeah. there. The guy, with, the guy with the hot dogs in the front, because you might steal one out and just throw it out. You just don't know. But right. yes, it translates to, to ghost hunting because you know, you have, your senses have to be tuned in. You have to be paying attention to you know, things going on around you, behind right. you. Did you hear something upstairs? Did you hear something down before? Did, did you see something? Right. So, yeah, it definitely it definitely translates to having a 360 yeah. and encompassing everything. And I think that it definitely it translates. Because, I mean, I, I always say that professional wrestling was my journey then. Right. And, like, for the last 10 years, the paranormal and ghost hunting and spirit communication is what I've been doing now. So it's pretty cool. That is pretty wild. <laughs> That's awesome. I think Sandra comes back with another question later. That's cool. Mike Crockett. Love him. <laughs> yeah, Crockett. And he's, like you said, he's doing great things with that. I got to say, I gotta say when, they were, when they were asking questions, I saw they wrote them, but I didn't look at them because I, yeah. I, I didn't want to prepare myself. So. Right. All right. Uh, what prompted you to change from the outpatient to J. Cobain when you went to work for Tony Rumble? All right. So when I first, walked, when I first went to Tony Rumble, you know, actually, um, Smooth Operator Trey actually got me the contact with Tony, okay. and he, he got me in with Tony. And I, my first show for Tony, honestly, I wrestled Mr. USA Tony Atlas oh, wow. two times in one day. Wow! Went back when I don't remember Somerville used to have the Good Times. Yeah, Good Times Report. They used to run, and Tony used to run there all the time. So Tony and I did a quick match there because Tony just wasn't feeling it at that point. Yeah. And then later on, we were at a high school out in um, Western Mass, I believe. I can't remember the actual exact town that we were in, or Wilmington, or I forget where the heck right. we were, but. And I did that match, and actually, um, you know Ron Zombie? Yes. He was my nurse. He was Nurse Zombie. Oh, okay. Because I brought him with me because I wanted him to, to, I wanted him to have him with me because, you know, he, he wasn't getting used much at the time with, uh, with, with Kowalski. And, you know. Right. But at some point, like, we were talking, uh, Tony had called me up after, after doing the outpatient gimmick for a little while and doing some TV stuff with, with uh, Dr. Red was my manager. Yeah. One of Tony's He's old He's coming wrestlers. up in a little bit. So, um, all of a sudden, it was like 
Tony Clemens goes, we're going to go in a different direction. He goes, I'm going to team you up with Slam Dog and Zombie oh, what in the New York Post. Yeah. And, but but you got to come up with a name for yourself. Right. And I'm like, the hell? I've been doing the outpatient right. now for a long time, well, at least six, seven years. I'm like, hmm. And then I'm like, okay, there's there's a, there's a little bit of like Ron Zombie has is the tie-in with with heavy metal and Slam Dog is kind of like the Beastie Boys hip hop thing. I'm like, why don't I go grunge? And then I'm like, nice. and I said Cobain. Yeah. You know, because I think you know, and then but I spelled it with a K versus yep. a C. And I'm like, you know what? I'll just shorten my first name down to J and do J Cobain. I was still acting crazy like the outpatient, yep. but I was. I was like indoctrinated in with the New York Posse, so right. I was like the that was like the crazy half, <laughs> you know. And those, that's when we had started having the, the big issues with like the Brotherhood versus the New York Posse. Yeah, they had a big war with those guys. Yep. It was fun with working with like Knuckles and Eric Sabrasia and that's and all awesome those guys. And that's when I started taking the helmet shots from Tony. So <laughs> <laughs> with the baseball helmets. So yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah, the old was, George Scott helmet. Remember George Scott for the Red Sox? But yeah, no, it was it was Tony's. Idea, I think um, that you know, along with some coercing with uh, Zombie and uh, and Slam Dog to get yeah. me to get, to change things up, right? And give give everybody a chance to like work together. And you know, it was it was cool. It was a lot of fun. I mean, at one point, I'm not sure if you remember, uh, Slam Dog and I took the NWA World Tag Team Championships off of the Brotherhood, which yes. was on Knuckles and um, yep. Duke Stalton yeah. in Somerville, and that was one of the highlights of. Getting just a chance to even hold the belts, and for just for a small period of time, it was it was so cool. Yeah, but it was also just you know it was just it was a it was a great experience. You know, just right. working with those guys. Yeah, and and how good they that they that they were was just, that's yeah. wild. You're in the record books. You are. <laughs> There's another really weird statistic we can talk about that in a yeah, little no. bit, but no. Um, and Crockett actually mentioned it on his um on his TikTok thing. Yeah. Did you know that it was myself? And I, I'm not sure it was uh, the Spanish dude. Oh my God, not Punisher. It was somebody else. Like, we did, we were the main event at like the Taste of Boston Festival, and we get credit for having the largest outdoor crowd in the history of professional wrestling. Oh wow! Because they, well, they counted the whole crowd going in all day long. As uh, I don't really count it. It was just so cool. He's, he's like he's like yeah. If you look it up, the the you know the four was like Jay Cobain tagged up with blah 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 against these two guys, and they're in. And we're in the record book for having being in front of the largest. Crowd. That's wild. <laughs> was, like, was that at the Hot Dog Safari? I thought it was the Taste of Boston uh, Festival. Okay, to be no, honest with you. yeah, right. That's I, what it I was. did wrestle at the Hot Dog Safari one time. That yeah. was that was cool too. Yeah, but I mean, uh, but no, the the Taste of Boston with, with the crowd constantly coming in and out, and it's like wow. Right. I mean, I don't count that as, a, as the biggest outdoor. It's like a bigger crowd than even the major federations. <laughs> just, just because they they just they, all they did was they counted all the t all the ticks right? that were coming through the door. So. I'll take it. it was, hey, not bad. It's, it's, not it's, bad. You, it's, it's you drew a big house. It, it was, it, you know, the food drew a big house. Right. We, were, we were just there as the entertainment. But you know, it's just one of those oddball things that, right. that getting a chance to be involved with is cool. That's wild. Yeah. All right, Crockett's back. How did Nurse Zombie become a part of the act? You kind of just said it, but yeah. So, I mean, Ron would definitely know more than I would about the whole thing. But I, I remember that I just started working with Tony and. Um, we had the match coming up with with um, with with Atlas. Yeah, and I wanted to bring him in, but there wasn't a regular spot for him yet. So I brought him in as my second. So he got these green scrubs. I got photos somewhere of of, of me with Tony Atlas in the ring, and he's on the outside as my as my second. Yeah. You know, nurse on me and the outpatient. It wasn't a very long thing, but it was it was it was cool to have him there because I love Ron. Ron's like one of my one of my favorite friends. In, That's awesome. In, in, in the business, I mean, he's got to be coming on here eventually. He he already said yes, yeah, so I just got to figure out a date for him. He's a cool dude. Yeah, you know, definitely cool. Awesome. All right. Michelle Boyd Bonatti. Okay, yep. Would you ever consider getting into wrestling again? <laughs> I'm going to have to probably say no. I mean, there is so much talent out there now. Right. And there's so many people who, I, I apologize for this, but maybe go a little longer than they probably should. A little longer in the tooth, so to speak. Yep. And I don't really, and I left at a time where, I was around 2011. I, that was my last year. Decided I was going to do a bunch of matches for Jimmy and uh, New World Wrestling yep. Extreme, and every match I had, 
it recovered longer. It was longer and longer to recover. Right. And like I wrestled um, the Widowmaker, Eric Shred. Eric Shred. And it took me three and a half days to recover from that damn match. Wow. It wasn't because it was anything crazy. It was just that my body was telling me that yeah. it was time. Right. Would I consider getting a pair of scrubs and making an appearance? You know, come out, maybe choke slam somebody. Or right, just, right. As, as, as fun as an assault, I think. I can't say that I would rule that out, but as far as actively competing, no. Um, I, I've done some work. I was doing some work with uh, with Jimmy and New World before the pandemic because I stopped right. doing anything after, during that time. I, and I was actually a manager called Mr. Old School. I was wearing oh, like cool. a, I was wearing the, the suit coat and everything, and I was I was managing the Barbarians, uh, Dan Badondi, and stuff like that. But would I would I ever consider physically wrestling again? Right. No, that this, that these guys out there, they're, they're just they're just way too high flying, and I don't do any of that high flying. Right, stuff, right. So I'm cool. I hear but, you. But you know, I make an appearance. I can't say I can't say that I wouldn't I wouldn't put on a pair of scrubs and didn't do that. Awesome. I'd love to see you do it. <laughs> uh, what was your motivation getting into wrestling? <sighs> Being a fan. Yeah. You know, um, in the '80s, in the in back when kayfabe actually meant something. Yes. You know, the, the dreaded kayfabe work. Yeah. But for me, it's like those guys are just larger than life. Yeah, yeah. They were. I mean, the smallest wrestlers back then, Savage was what two thirty. Yeah. Piper was two forty. Right. You know, Paul, Paul Orndorff was a smaller height wise, but he was jacked. Jacked. But these guys, you know, when you're down low and you, and you see like Andre the Giant walk by you and he's blocking out the sun, and even like Hogan was taller than his right. and, and you see these guys in the ring, and it's so cool yeah. to see them, and you're like. I want to be a wrestler, but not really, you know. And then <laughs> when I, when my dad got me into Kowalski, that's when I really that's when the really the fire kicked in, you know. Nice. And when I started when I started to figure out like what what, what the what my name was going to be, right? And then and what what I was going to do with mannerisms, and then trying to develop it, and if it was going to work, if it wasn't going to work, and stuff like that. But yeah, nice. We're actually going to get to a question about that. <laughs> All right, Michelle's last question is: Haven't been blessed seeing you wrestle many moons ago. I don't think I remember asking you that. That was the uh, what was the motivation yeah, to get yeah. into wrestling. All right, Chad Epic. You know Chad. Remember Chad. All right. Will we ever see you in the ring again, Chad? He just answered that. Maybe as a manager. Maybe as a guest spot. I can't. I can't deny. I wouldn't mind smacking somebody with a chair once. In, you know. Yeah. I can. I can. I can definitely get the itch to throw to swing a Chad chair. Chad runs a show here and there. Chad. What do you <laughs> hey, think, you buddy? Know, you could do a run in. All right, Sandra Chase is back. Okay, cool. Jeremy, did you ever wrestle with Michael, Mike Kane or Russell Allen? Both are from Clinton. I don't honestly know, yeah. to be honest with you. I don't know them either. So. I don't know, like I don't know what their what their gimmick names right, were, right. or when they actually performed. But yeah, I would. I may have come ac I may have come across them. I may have uh, interacted right. with them, but I I can't say unless I actually knew like who they were, who they were or what they were doing. Sounds good. <laughs> you know Dave Forney, right? Yep. Yeah, Dave's got. Five questions. It's all good, man. I love Dave. What's your favorite memories from working for Tony Rumble's CWA? So I came in right towards the tail of CWA, and right when Tony was transitioning into NWA New England. Okay. So what like, what Tony's CWA? Tony was just a mastermind for what the people wanted. Right. Not necessarily what the talent wanted, but what the people yeah. wanted. You know, he connected on a level with the fans that you very rarely see. Right. He was, you know, he would definitely hone in and, that, and, and that's what, I, I loved working for Tony because it was fun, you know? He'd come up, shake in, hey, how you doing, blah, blah, yeah. blah. You know, this is what you're gonna do tonight. And he, but he was also open for the, if you had something that maybe would work. Right. He would always work with you. He was always, he, he was cool, you know? There are some promoters I worked with that I wasn't, well, they weren't too cool to work with. But right. Tony was definitely, Amazing and and like uh, working, getting a chance to fight Tony Atlas, um, Vic Steamboat, right? Um, you know, uh, interacting. Uh, he brought in Barry Windham, and we we did stuff with interactions with Barry Windham, and getting a chance to work with Tony and the Brotherhood, and you know, it was just it was just so cool that because everybody could you could intermingle everybody, like right. you know, even getting to wrestle like a good friend of mine, Bo Douglas, and stuff yeah. like that too. So. Yeah. Now was Jim Cornette around then too a little oh, bit? Well, okay, that he. I'm was, a big Cornette fan. Cornette came in. I believe he was in the NWA New England era. Okay, 
That's why that's why I kind of separated. Yep, yep. The, if you want to ask me my favorite memory of working in that time frame, having a cup of coffee with Jim Cornette as our manager wow. was awesome. Yeah. You know, and Jimmy was really cool. I think we did like maybe two or three matches that he that he, he had made guest spots, but he managed us right. against different opponents. But just that's wild. Cornette is like one of my favorites. He's, he's on my, my, my manager, Mount Rushmore. Of all. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Has to be. Absolutely. You know? Um, and you must listen to his podcast, right? I mean, I, I love how his can podcast. You not? They're awesome. It's honest. And I love how he talks about AEW. He has a nickname for everyone. <laughs> Everybody. Um, pockets. Orange cats in his pockets because he puts his hands in his pocket. <laughs> it's pretty funny, man. Hey, nail them, Pedro. <laughs> oh, and I, we can't really say what he used to call our uh, Kenny Omega. Can't say it on the air. Oh, no, 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 no. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> right? No. Okay, days back. Thoughts on being managed by Dr. Red Dillinger back then? It was brief because Dr. Red was having some health issues okay. at the time. But he put, Tony put Dr. Red with me. Because it, it worked, you know. He'd follow down with me with, with the chart. He'd like check the guys with the stuff. He, 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 we played off of each other, you know. It was cool. We did a couple of tapings with him, and then like Red had issues like health wise, so he yeah. wasn't there as much as we were, you know. I'm sure they would like to, but he was cool. He was very nice to me, you know. And uh, I, it, I had nothing but fond memories of working with Red. Nice. You know? All right. Are there any wrestlers you didn't get to wrestle that you wish you did? Who? I mean. There's, I mean, there's a, probably a who's who of right. them, but um, honestly, there's a couple that worked for uh, for Jimmy that I wish I'd actually gotten to have a one on one match with, like um, Mike Brunson, Big Mike Brunson. Yeah. Um, oh my God, uh, young guy, uh, Verter Breaker. I was, I always wanted to get, I always wanted to get in with him. I, Same I, style, I, son. We were, we were in the same ring with each other, like with like Battle Royals here or there, but yeah. I never actually got a chance to work with him. Right. He was good. Um, Giant Pharaoh, uh, big business. I loved him. I love. I mean, I did, I did battle royals with these guys, but I never right. had a chance to actually do a one on one. Yeah, you know. And another one that I wish I, I had had a chance to do one on one with is uh, Jimmy Jack Cash. We never actually had a one on one actual match. We've been in tag matches against each other. Yeah, we've been on the same side before. We've never actually right. had a chance to to work with each other. So. Jimmy's awesome, man. He's a great dude. Yeah. I like Jimmy a lot. Um, how did you form the tag team? With Trooper Gilmore. Who would like, did someone Which put version? it together or did oh, you guys put oh, yourself together? Oh, the Trooper Gilmore together? version? Yeah. yeah, the Trooper one. That was actually, that was actually Jason. Um, from what I remember, it was Jason's idea. Jason wow. with, um, yeah, I believe, I forget who else, but you know, we were working for Jason's version of the yep. NWA New England. It was well after Tony had passed. And um, he combined us together and... The criminally insane thing. We had a custom entrance music, and we used to come bust into the curtain and just—it was so fun. Yeah. Because Jimmy Allen, like you know, uh, Trooper Gilmore. Yeah. He was kind of timid at first, but then like he started feeding off of my energy, and he started nice. becoming like a crazy cop. And the two was in it would it was like he used to just go out of his mind during these matches, and that was around the time when. Hardcore rules. Every every criminally insane match was like hardcore right. rules. So like trash cans and tables and chairs. And I used to do the gimmick spot where I used to take three chair shots to the head, no sell it, and then just punch through it and knock the guy down. Jeez. And all this. But I mean, God, I shouldn't have done that. Too many freaking shots to the head. Right. But no, it was Jason Deliata, Jason Rumbles. Um, yeah. That's wild. Maybe as far as I remember. But, but yeah. the dynamic of you guys coming out together too, though, you know, the outpatient crazy and the trooper. You know what I mean? It oh, just yeah. was really cool to see. That's really why was. that picture that I used. Yep. That, that's one of my favorite pictures. I love that one too. Yeah, you know? it's awesome. We, I mean, and then also when we translated over to Slaughterhouse later yep. on. You and know, Crazy Chainsaw and, Bastard. Yep. And I, and, I just, and I switched my character up from wearing the street clothes to, and I, actually I, when I was doing Criminal Insane, I used to wear the uh, prison jumpsuit, the right. all one color jumpsuit. And then when we did Slaughterhouse, I switched over to hospital scrubs, torn up hospital scrubs, and I cut my hair short. Yep. And you know, I, I, I got rid of the eye makeup, but I also broke out the bat wrapped in chain, and, and I used that as, as a gimmick for a right. while, too. So That was wild. It, it was, I, I tried to adapt as I yeah. was going through, you know? That's cool. That really is. And, and Dave's last question is, uh, how did you come up with the outpatient gimmick? You know, that was just luck, yeah. you know? I wanted to do something that, like, I wanted to take Jeremy and 
elevate them tenfold. Right. Because a lot of guys, you know, do regular guy, you know, they change their name, but they, they, they like the regular tights or anything. That wasn't what I was going to be. Right. I didn't have the body to just wear tights or trunks or whatever. So I needed something different. And then I was watching, you know, I was always a fan of like some of the crazier stuff and like Hannibal Lecter and right. whatnot and so forth. I'm like, hmm, the outpatient. He's out of his mind. He's a mental patient. Let's put the words together and then come up with, with the look, with the long, grow, start to grow my hair out longer and, and put the eye makeup on and wet it down and, and just, let, you know, just let it like look like I was, like, had the sweat going on. But yeah. it was all just part of the gimmick. And, you know, it, it, that's pretty much where the outpatient came from, you know. And <clears throat> I wanted to be a, a bad guy because I was, I, was such a, I was such a nice guy outside of it right. that I needed to go somewhere else, you know. Just put all of my frustrations out into character and just keep myself separate, you know? And it was nice. just easy because afterwards I could get cleaned up and then leave and nobody would even notice that I was leaving. The right. You know, it's funny is <laughs> most of the heels are in real life were the nice guys and most of the baby faces were kind of pricks. Yeah, you know, kind of. It happens, you know. <laughs> All right. Just to get away from the wrestle for two minutes here, yeah. what's the best concert you ever went to? Oh, dear God. Clash of the Titans, 1991. Alice in Chains opened up. <sighs> it was followed by... Um, Megadeth, Slayer, and Anthrax was the headline. So that was, but that was back in the time when you had a Countdown to Extinction, you had um, Seasons of the Abyss for Slayer, and you also had Persistence of Time for Anthrax. Yeah. And I'm a huge Rush fan. Yeah. So um, R40, the final one, and actually Time Machine. Back when I got, was getting married in 2010, my friend took me as a bachelor's uh, as a wedding present, and that was like f like three and a half, four hours of nothing but pure Rush, and they went from the new stuff all the way backwards. To the to the older stuff and with the laser That's show wild. and all that. Yeah, I'm a huge Rush fan, and you know stuff like that. But, all right, what about our worst concert you ever went to? Oh God, Jethro freaking Tull. Yeah. Oh my God, Jethro Tull at um, what is it? Great Woods. Great Woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So boring. Tweeter Center now, right? I think they call it whatever the Tweeter it is. Center now. You would they would no. It the most boring Real. experience ever. I fell asleep in the chair. He only had like two or three good songs anyways. Oh, I agree. I mean, and uh, I think uh, well, it was either Crosby, Sills, and Nash was, was like opening, yeah. I think was. But wow, that's kind of weird. I, I, it might have been them. It could have been somebody else. I can't quite remember. <laughs> Honestly, that night, they just, they were trouble. And I will say this, and I'm going to get crap for it, Jimmy Buffett. Ugh. Yeah, I'm not I, a big Jimmy Buffett I went, fan. I went either. for the experience of yeah. supposedly and all that crap. Right. But you know what? No. I'm not a parrot head. I have no interest in listening to that kind of stuff. Maybe if I'm drinking and I'm half in the bag, that music isn't too horrible. <laughs> right. But, but no, nah, I was, I was, but I was there working in the front of the house as a, a security and yeah. a, boring as hell. Wow. Oh, All right. What, um, what would surprise me in your musical playlist? I don't even know. Yeah. Um, Evanescence. Well, no, I, I'm a huge Evanescence fan. Um, I love uh, female lead heavy metal groups. Yep. You know, I don't know. I don't know the names of a lot of them. I have an essence uh, in this moment. The uh, Archangel or, yeah. or a few that, but I mean, I love heavy metal. I, I don't do country at all. I don't do anything religious like gospel music. It's, it's definitely not my thing. Yeah. But um, hardcore rap, like all the old school rap yeah. guys. <laughs> Maybe the occasional like Run DMC, Fat Boys, Beastie Boys, uh, Houdini stuff like that back in the day too. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite TV show? Ooh. I'm a big TV guy. That's why I love asking okay. this question. Um, I was huge on Sons of Anarchy. <sighs> Me too. Um, I tried the, the Walking Dead for the first seven seasons. It was cool. Yeah. We're currently right now. I'm binge watching uh, CSI Vegas, the newest version of it. Yeah. But I, I like like the like like hard like strange, Stranger Things. Love Stranger Things. That's a good show. That was pretty cool. Did you watch Breaking Bad too and all that? Tried. Got yeah. two episodes in. Just didn't. Did never caught yep. me. It never caught me. What about Better Call Saul? Same umbrella. No, same. Okay. I, mean, I love the I love the Sopranos when yep, the Sopranos were around. What about the Wire? Did you like the Wire at all? I can't remember the Wire. It was honestly. on HBO. It was, yeah. Yeah, I like the Wire. That's why. I Twenty Four, major fan of Twenty Four with Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah. That show would it, it just captivated me. Yeah. Prison Break. Did you see that one? I did watch that Prison was, Break. That, that was, was, that was good. cool. My son got me into that show. And I do like a lot of the superhero ones too. Yep. You know. Yep. DC does great superhero 
shows, yeah. but their movies suck. Did and Marvel's have, movies are great, but their TV shows suck. It's, right. a, it's, it's, a, it's a horrible dynamic, but yeah. it's true. Did you catch Snowfall by chance? No, I did not. Yeah, well, you should check that out. Snowfall or Snowpiercer? Snowfall. The one that's on the train? It's about that crack epidemic in South Central Los Angeles, oh, California. Whoa. It's <laughs> awesome. You should really check it out. Oh, yeah. Five five or six seasons. It's a really good show. And I'm, and I'm a big Game of Thrones person, too. Yeah, I like that, too. Up until the last season, they kind of, they kind yeah. of tanked that one. But. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> everyone complained about the finale. I thought it was good, though. Well, I liked rushed, the show. The problem is that they rushed it. Yeah. And they true. had no source material, so they were actually going off of whatever they could come up with. They right. ran out of stuff after the fifth season. They, wow. there, were, there were no more books after the fifth season. So oh, no kidding. All I didn't source, know that. All the source material was being written under the supervision of the guy who actually ran the, wrote the books, but... Yeah, after after season wow. five was all I did not know it was, that. All, it was all freestyle. Yeah, that's wild. Cause that was a good show though. I did. Really, I enjoyed that it show was, a lot. You know, and it was weird because it was type of show that because of the names of the people, I had to watch episodes two or three times because I couldn't figure out who everybody was. Seriously, <laughs> once in a while I'll go back and I'll catch like the like the most extreme moments, like when the mountain smashes that guy's oh, head dude. or. I thought that surprised the crap out of me, dude. I thought he was gonna win. And although she's the villain. I love when Cersei burns down the church with all of them, yeah. like the green fire. Yeah, you know, just and she gets she, she gets her payback. Yeah. You know, I that that the music. I think what caught me is the soundtrack. Yeah, the Game of Thrones music it pulls you into the show. Right. You know, and I mean, come on, the first episode you get somebody beheaded and whatnot and so forth. The, like, the lead guy. Like what? We, pretty much. I mean, his he, he died, was the he biggest died, star when he, the show started. He died on the third episode. Was it? But, was it? Okay. But he actually he actually takes somebody out, beheaded in the very first episode out You're in the right. middle of the field. Yeah. And for something that I'm like, okay, this could be interesting. So yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was crazy though when they get and his kids seeing it and everything too. You know what I mean? That was pretty crazy. All right. Um, what about favorite movie franchise? You know, Rocky, Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. Okay. And horror. I mean, obviously, yeah. Steven, like Maximum Overdrive. Right. You know, um, my guilty pleasure movie, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, nice. Nice. Yep. You know, Howard the Duck. Yeah. It's another Howard. huge one. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in forever. Oh, God, yeah. Um, but I've watched that about five times. Uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. I actually watched it the other day. Was, I watched it was, that, it, that too. was crap. But the second one's going to be better. I think so, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. But I love goofy horror movies. Like, right. You know, but I also, Nightmare on Elm Street, huge fan. Jason Voorhees, you know, not yep. so much Michael Myers, but Freddy and Jason. Right. Um, Child's Play, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I'm huge in the horror franchises. Good action movies. Die Hard. Are franchises. you watching the Chucky Move show? I did watch it. The I, watched, I, I watched haven't the two caught any of it yet, but I think I want to. Yeah, I watched the first two seasons. Yeah. Of it, yeah. Pretty good? It was good. It's hard to stay focused on TV shows because everybody has right. good stuff. Yeah. You know, I like to bounce it around a little bit and see right. what I'm in the mood for. You know? Okay. Um, what about, what's your favorite rock band? Rush, you said, right? Rock band, yeah. I mean, and, old, old school Metallica. Um, yeah. Ozzy Osbourne's vintage material from like the 1980s, like the Ultimate Sin and stuff yeah. like that. I, to this day, I love it, you know. Disturbed, currently disturbed, uh, older corn. Uh, yeah. Anything that just that gets me motivated to just like want to, for a long time it was like, how do I gear up to be the outpatient? How do I pull right. myself into that character? Yeah, and that's why all my entrance music was heavy. Right. Because I would be in the I'd be in the locker room preparing for a match, going back, finding lockers that like slam my head in the locker and just like just dropping Jeremy off at the pool and then bringing the character in. Right. So when I walked to that curtain, it's go time from the beginning. Nice. I would pace back and forth. I would like growl. I, people people would think I was crazy, but to be in that mind, like you could be a regular heel or, or, or face and go out to the ring and, and do, you know, just a, I had to get into a different mindset with that right. character. And a lot of guys do that with their characters, you know, and, but I had to be, I had to be in the zone for that right. character because I didn't want to think other thoughts. I wanted to be in the moment. And then when I get back, calm down, come back to normal and stuff like that. So. All right. Um, what's the craziest thing you've seen in a locker room? <clears throat> I don't even know. No. I mean, any fights or anything? I've seen a few yeah. back in the day, but I mean, nothing, nothing major. Nothing. No, no people that I'm going to remember, or even if I did, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to call anybody out. Yeah. There were a lot of hotheads back in the day. Obviously, everybody's you know trying to protect their spot and whatnot. Right. A lot of I, I've seen arguments and stuff like that, and you know, but honestly, no. I mean, not really. And okay. 
I just like, you know, I, I try to focus on the positives. Right. If there's something weird going on, I don't want to be any part of that stuff, you know? I got you. My stuff was weird enough as it was. <laughs> right. Well, we got like seven minutes. Let's of play course. the name game. Sure. Slick Wagner Brown. Really good guy. I met him when he was really young, like in high school time. Him and, him Bo, and Bo Douglas. Yeah. Him and Bo and uh, Jason. And <clears throat> they would come to Kowalski school. But no, yeah. Really cool. Really cool guy. He's really doing cool. great things with Testa Shred down in Connecticut. Oh, yeah. He, you know, great performer. You know? Nice. All right. How about uh, you brought him up earlier? Eric Shred. Oh, uh, Widowmaker, yeah. Widowmaker. I know he's living down south now, and he's very happy. You know, oh, is that? Yeah, he yeah. moved down south? Yeah, he's living with his wife and his kids down yeah. there. And uh, Eric, I always had great matches with Eric. I enjoyed being He was a good worker. Being, oh, he was. He, he was really, really was. He, was. he was stiff, but he wasn't afraid to take it. Take it. So, right. you know, if he's going to give it, he's going to take it. So that's cool. Yep. Excellent. You also brought this guy up a while ago, too. Dan Bionic. Dan Badondi. Oh, I, there's nothing I, there's nothing bad I could ever say about Danny. Danny was so cool. Whether I wrestled him when he was really young before he put on all that size, or when I managed him when he was when when I gave him the moniker the Bionic Bull, Dan Bionic, yeah. because he's now he's doing the Bionic Bull, and it, and it gives him more character. But Danny, whether I'm whether I'm managing him or, or I'm wrestling him or whatever, he's always just one of the just a great guy. Just nice. a great, crazy nutcase when it comes to some of that conspiracy stuff. But you know. right. <laughs> How about uh, Big Gino Martino? Gino Martino. I haven't, I haven't heard that name in a long time. I love Gino. John was a really cool dude. You know, I, I, I don't know what happened. I just I stopped hearing from him a long time ago. He actually came to my mother's funeral back in 2007 when she passed from cancer. And, you know, he's actually related to one of my father's best friends growing up. Oh, so wow. that's and, and it's kind of but he was cool. I wrestled him a bunch. Definitely a stiff dude, but yeah. you know, he, you know, he always said, "I'll take it, but I'm going to give it." So, right. You know. <laughs> and all the kind of great things that have happened for him, though, the superhuman. He's got the thickest skull in the world. <laughs> I've seen some of it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. All right. How about let's stick with stick with the big guys? How about Big Rick Fuller? <laughs> right. I remember the chops. I remember the chops all day long. Rick, I wrestled Rick a bunch of times. Really, really nice guy. Yeah. You know. I always made sure that I didn't. I didn't want to piss him off because I didn't. I didn't want. To, I didn't want to take the the, the brunt. I, t I saw him take it out on a few guys in the ring who were screwed. Oh up. yeah. Oh. I seen him light up Virgil. I didn't see that. <laughs> Poor lonely Virgil. <laughs> he he lit him up and he said to the referee too because he was outside the ring and the ref was in. He goes, "Watch this!" And he goes and he's got Virgil in the corner and he lights him up and then Virgil low blows him and puts his feet on the ropes for the pin. No lie. Virgil left the ring, grabbed his bag, still in his outfit, and left. Goodbye. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. See you later, because he thinks oh, yeah. he pissed Rick off, and oh, yeah. you don't want to piss Rick no, off. No, no, no. There no. were certain guys you just didn't want to do that. Big so. dude. All right, how about um, Bo Douglas? Good old oh, Bo. Bo. I love Bo, what, too. What a, what a great kid. I, sure I wrestled is. him a lot of times. Nothing but great things. He's always treated me with the utmost in respect, and you know I would give nothing, give him nothing but, but yeah. the best back. He is one of the best guys I've ever met in wrestling. Seriously, oh, yeah. and all the stuff that he does with like the Bell Time Club yep. and, all, and all that kind of stuff was was really it's cool. a great father to his yeah. daughter. Yeah, I, it's, it's just like I know. I just when I think of these guys, I remember them being really young. Right. So, you know, but he he was always cool to me. And I, you know, excellent, a great friend. Yeah. I had a kid. I had a kid here a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month and a half ago. Mark Moman, Lemonhead. Do you remember Mark? I know I you wrestled him once at least. I oh, God. I do remember him, but not very well. Okay. It, it's he it was like one of those guys that I wrestled, but I never really connected with too much. Okay. Know. How about um, Jason Knight? <laughs> Jason Knight, Assault Championship Wrestling, the night that you know, Slam Dog and I put on the masks and we're the prowlers and we fought him and Zombie, and he put me underneath a barbed wire board and jumped off the ring apron and landed right on top of me on top of the board. Oh yeah, I remember, I remember, I, but he was so he was cool. To yeah, me. he was a bit he was a bit out there. Oh yeah, some of the stuff I've seen him do. <laughs> he is definitely out there. Oh. But he was pretty talented too. I mean, he managed the Eliminators. You brought up Cronus and Sad yep. earlier. Nice. That's literally my favorite tag team from television. You they know, were, they were cool. You know. All right. How about um, cousin Larry? Larry the hillbillies. Huntley? The hillbillies. Yeah. 
Never got. I never really got in the ring with them. Okay. But I met them. They were really. They were really cool guys. But I, I never actually got to mix it up with them. So. How about a guy that's in the WWE right now? Iva Todd Hanson. Oh my Hansom God. Hanson Johnny, whatever you want to call. I actually, if I, if I if memory serves me correct, I actually lost. I get he he won his first championship belt from me. Nice. It was at the Superstar Billy Graham benefit that um I think Marotti was putting on back in the day, and he was doing the yeah the Handsome Johnny I think yeah. it was or. And we were wrestling, and I think it was for the uh, NWA New England uh, TV Championship. I actually remember wrestling. But yeah, Todd was great. You know, I, and he's so awesome. I mean, he's killing it still. Yeah. You know, with I hear, from him, I hear from him once in a while, so it's cool. Well, a lot you know this on TV, right? A lot of times a tag team partner goes, the tag team disappears. But yep. they're actually using him every week, it pretty is, much. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It yeah. really is, and he's a great guy too. All right, how about uh? We also brought this guy up earlier, Eric Sprazia, because I like to bring up Eric because I want him to do the show. Eric was really cool, you know. I loved working with him and with Knuckles yep. and when there was the Brotherhood versus the New York Posse, you know. He was really cool, you know, heavy-handed, but definitely was was definitely cool to work with, you know. Right. Always a nice guy to me. Always was always cool to me. So yeah. Nice. How about uh? Wait, you tag team with him? I and I really don't talk too much about him on here. Curtis Slam Dunk. Oh, Raj, <laughs> he was he was cool, you know. He was definitely he was a, he was a really tough guy. Him and his brother, the mercenary. Man, ah, right? I was just I just yeah, wrote yeah, him yeah, down. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> Great guys. I loved working with both of those guys, you know, and you know nothing but the best praise for all of them. That's guys. awesome. Do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, not really, you know. Just um, I, it was it's, it's been a pleasure to be on the show with you today, man. I've been, I've seen all the episodes. And I was like, I was hoping to get a chance to come on and do this with you. And I, I'm and glad I, I asked. I, you. And I appreciate you bringing me on. And I, you know, I oh, we got to do this again because we barely touched that on anything. Trust I'm, me, I'm, I'm good for another. I one. love Absolutely. having people on multiple times because the shows yeah. just keep getting better. Absolutely. Anytime, Jeremy, sir. thanks, Anytime. man. Thank you very Thank much, you man. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No problem, man. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah. Guys, we're out. Peace. Thank you. Hi, guys. I hope you're enjoying the show. Listen, I could use a little help to grow my YouTube channel. So if you could please like, share, and subscribe. That's most importantly, subscribe. Send me a direct message, and I'll give you a shout out here on the show. My YouTube channel is real simple. It's just my name, Leo Connors. Thanks in advance. Peace.